Yeah, so I did a video on this a couple of years ago. It's sin, since been deleted, but how about this? This is John chapter 3, the Gospel of John. And no doubt the most popular or most quoted verse, it's uh, a lot of evangelicals, they quote this verse like a sword. They do draw a sword, and this is their sword. You know, this is their ultimate truth. And, and it's sad because we have to read all the scriptures, not just one verse, you know, that our creator said. We have to consider all verses and compare them and pray about them and ask for understanding and wisdom and knowledge and insight. You know, it's so simple, but people want to be simplistic. They want to think everything they've been taught is true. And their traditional values, their church traditions, you know, whatever. You can't take one verse and, and draw it like a gun, you know, and this is your gun. That's it, you know. I don't care what you say, you know. God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's it. And the majority of Christians, you know, they don't know much more than that. And it's sad. There is infinite, infinite wisdom in the scriptures. On so many spiritual levels, and I've talked about that before. But let's break this down real quick. I don't want to make this long. But I, I want to I want to debunk this. Because this is basically what every English translation says. In the New Testament, John 3.16. Basically... King James, New King James, Revised Standard Version, ESV, you know, International Standard Version, whatever you pick, the message, the New American Standard Version, they all say the same thing. Now, why do they keep using the same words? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you in on a little secret and a little bit of insight into me. So I was in my, uh, I was in my mid-20s and I really wanted to serve God. You know, I really wanted to help other people and I thought, you know, maybe I need to be a pastor. So I went to a seminary. A seminary. That's a uh, for those of you that don't know, it's a college. It's a college designed for pastors and teachers and Sunday school teachers. So I started there. And my very first year, I took New Testament Greek, which the Greek that the New Testament's written in is, is about 2,000 years old, give or take. And I started reading it and learning the language for myself. And I started asking questions from these supposed professors, you know, scholars. Got a PhD after their name and all that. But when I started really trusting what the Greek really said, I was like, why do you translate it like this? Or why does this English version say this when the Greek says something different? And the Greek is almost 2,000 years older than most of our Bible versions. And folks, and I was raised Baptist. I don't claim to be Baptist anymore. You know, I don't go to church or anything. 
but it doesn't matter what denomination you're in. They all, they all trust in translations like this. I don't care what your, fla your favorite flavor is. KJV, ESV, NIV, so on. They all say the same thing. But you want to say, tell me that this means the same thing as this when they contradict? Well, needless to say, I angered a lot of people. And I had to drop out of that damn seminary. But that's probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Because when I learned the grammar, the syntax, the way the words and the phrases work and they interact with each other, I was like, this does not equal what this is. All right, I'm going to give you an example real quick. And I'm done. I'm going to translate this verbatim, what it really says. John 3.16, thus, for thus, he was devoted. God was devoted to the universe in such a manner that his only uniquely born or only born he gave so that everyone that is faithful to him should not be destroyed, but instead should have age enduring life. I highly recommend you repeat, you rewind and repeat what I just said, because there's dozens of passages where it doesn't say this, but it says that. There's a big difference between believing in somebody and being faithful to somebody. Anybody that's had a relationship with the opposite sex can tell you that. Okay, I believe in him or her. No, are you faithful to him or her? And the syntax of the Greek and the direct object, that's a direct object. Somebody's faithful to him. The son of our creator, faithful to him, not believes in him. That's a pagan concept. Oh, I just believe in somebody. Therefore, I'm saved. No, that's totally pagan and satanic. The scripture says, being faithful or loyal to him. Big difference. Huge different. Life-changing difference. Stew on that. Please think on it. And I look forward to your comments. And may Yahweh and the Holy Spirit bless all of you.